Welcome to video number 7 for chapter 1 of Maths 2 Standard 9. We are discussing problem set 1. Question number 4. Coordinate of point P on a number line is minus 7. Find the coordinates of points on the number line which are at a distance of 8 units from point P. Now, the coordinates of point P on the number line is 7. So, we have the figure over here for reference. So, P is minus 7. Now, there will be two points, one on left hand side and one on right hand side. Both will be at a distance of 8 from P. Let point R be on right hand side of P and point Q be on left hand side of P both at a distance of 8. We know that point R will be larger and coordinate and point Q will be the smaller coordinate. So now distance PR is 8. That is the given information. So the coordinate of R minus coordinate of P is 8 because R is larger. So, R minus P is equal to 8. So, we want to find coordinate of R. So, R would be 8 plus coordinate of P. When I interchange this, I get 8 plus coordinate of P. Coordinate of P is known to us. So, we have 8 plus minus 7, which is equal to 8 minus 7. The answer is 1. And on the other side, I have distance QP as 8. This is given information. So, this, so the coordinate of P minus Q because P is greater. And the answer is 8. So, when I interchange this because I want to find coordinate of Q is equal to coordinate of P minus 8. This is known to me which is minus 7, minus 7, minus 8 is nothing but minus 15. Hence, the coordinates of the required points on the number line, which are at a distance of 8 units from the point, are 1 and minus 15. <coughs> question number 5. Answer the following questions. If A dash B dash C and distance AC is distance AC is 17 and BC is 6.5. How much is AB? AB would be AC minus BC. AC is 17. So minus BC is 6.5. So the answer is distance AB is equal to 10.5. Next. P dash Q dash R, PQ is 3.4 and QR is 5.7. How much is PR? We know that PR is equal to PQ plus QR. That means 3.4 plus 5.7. Distance PR is addition of both which is 9.1. Question number 6. Now this, my dear students, is just like question number 4 which we solved just now. So coordinate of point A on number line is 1. What are the coordinates of points on number line which are at a distance of 7 units from A? So this is A and I want 7 units from A on both sides. So right hand side as well as left hand side. So I'm going to name right hand side as C and left hand side as B. So distance AC I know as 7. Coordinate of C minus coordinate of A is equal to 7. Coordinate of C would be 7 plus coordinate of A. That is 7 plus 1 which is equal to 8. And on left hand side I have distance BA as 7. Coordinate of a minus coordinate of B is equal to 7. Coordinate of B will be 
coordinate of a minus 7, that is 1 minus 7 is equal to minus 6. So both the coordinates are 8 and minus 6. Question number 7. Write the following statements in conditional form. First one, every rhombus is a square. Its conditional form would be, if the given quadrilateral is a square, then it must be a rhombus. Second, angles in a linear pair are supplementary. Answer, if the given two angles are forming a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Third, a triangle is a figure formed by three segments. Conditional statement. If the, if the given figure is a triangle, then it is formed by three segments. Fourth one. A number having only two divisors is called a prime number. The conditional statement. If the given number is having only two divisors, then it is a prime number. Question number 8. Write the converse of each of the following statements. First one. If the sum of measures of angles in a figure is 180 degrees, then the figure is a triangle. Its converse. If the given figure is a triangle, then the sum of measures of its angles is 180 degrees. Second. If the sum of measures of two angles is 90 degrees, then they, they are complement of each other. Converse, if the given two angles are complement of each other, then the sum of measures of two angles is 90 degree. Third one, if the corresponding angles formed by a transversal of two lines are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. Converse, if the given two lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles formed by a transversal of two lines are congruent. Fourth one. If the sum of the digits of a number is divisible by 3, then the number is divisible by 3. Converse, if the given number is divisible by 3, then the sum of the digits of the number is divisible by 3. Question number 9. Write the antecedent given part and the consequent part to be proved in the following statements. First one, if all sides of a triangle are congruent, then its all angles are congruent. Antecedent would be all the sides of a triangle are congruent, the first part, and consequent would be the latter part, its all angles are congruent. Second one, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So first we need to write the statement in the conditional form. So the conditional form of this particular statement would be if the given quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other. Now it would be easier for us to write antecedent and consequent. So antecedent would be the given quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And consequent would be its diagonals bisect each other. Question number 10. Draw a labeled figure showing information in each of the following statements and write the antecedent and consequent. First one. Two equilateral triangles are similar. Now the given figure is over here. These are two equilateral triangles and they are similar. The given statement can be written in conditional form as if the given two triangles are equilateral then they are similar. So the antecedent would be the given two triangles are the given two triangles are equilateral 
and consequent would be they are similar. Second one, if angles in a linear pair are congruent, then each of them is a right angle. Over here, antecedent would be the angles in a linear pair are congruent and consequent would be each of them is a right angle and this is a figure to represent it. Third one, if the altitudes drawn on two sides of a triangle are congruent, then those two sides are congruent. So we have an antecedent as the altitudes drawn on two sides of a triangle are congruent and consequent would be those two sides are congruent. This is the figure, these are the altitudes on two sides. My dear students, with this we end problem set and chapter number one. You can, as I, as I have told you before, you can pause the videos anytime and go back to the videos to review how we have solved a particular sum. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching.